always felt that you are such a cold-hearted bitch. Jisa is in trouble, and Martha has been missing her dad. I have to give them some love, you know? Luna has you. You are the one who has to do something about this, not me. What? Dempsey and Marcus have been married for five years. They have a beautiful daughter. Luna is four years old. She was born right after their marriage. Dempsey and Marcus loved her so much, or that's what at least Dempsey was believing. One night, Dempsey and Luna are cooking curry. They are waiting for Marcus to come home from work. Mommy, Daddy isn't still home? Hmm, today is late than usual. I wonder why. If normal, Marcus will come home straight from work, but today he's still not home even after 7.30 p.m. No phone calls nor no replies on messenger apps. Mommy, I'm hungry. Righty, okay then, that's it. He finished the tin curry. While they were cleaning, Marcus finally came home. Welcome home! Oh! Besides Marcus, there are two others standing. It's his younger sister Giselle and Giselle's daughter Martha. Giselle and Martha are carrying a lot of luggage. Hey Marcus, what's going on? Dancy is confused. She can't make sense out of the circumstance. Marcus starts to speak and say something that Dancy never expected. From today, we will be supporting Giselle and Martha. They will be living with us. Marcus didn't tell anything to Dempsey prior to bringing them home. Dempsey is still baffled, not able to digest what is going on. Dempsey speaks up, barely making out words. What do you mean by supporting these two? This is all too sudden. You didn't tell me anything. I didn't tell you because this suddenly came up. She said had a fight with her husband and she just called me for help. Until when are these two staying here? It's not like we have an extra room, you know? Dempsey tries to hint at Marcus that this is not a good idea. However, Marcus doesn't seem to care. Why don't you let them use your room? Excuse me? What? My room? Yeah, you can move into Luna's room. Just tell Martha and use yours. What the? What Marcus just said doesn't make sense at all to Dempsey. Dempsey wonders why she has to endure this. Giselle and Martha should be the one to ask for it. Marcus turns towards Giselle and Martha with a broad smile, speaks in a kind voice. Please make herself home. Giselle and Martha step into the home without even saying hi to Dempsey. They settles down on the couch and starts to watch TV. Dempsey pulls Marcus to the side. She corners him, speaking quietly. This is all too sudden. We cannot afford to have them here. Marcus sighs, getting grouchy. You are so close-minded. Don't you understand that Giselle is having a hard time? Why can't you be nice to them? That's not the point. I don't mind them staying at our place for a bit. But isn't it too much to cover the expenses? I think we should at least ask them to cover for their food. You are so stingy. Giselle isn't working. She can't pay us. You're calling me stingy? I don't need your opinion. My sister is in trouble and me. The father of this family decided to support her. The only thing I want you is to shut up and obey. Marcus lets them say. He goes to play a game with Giselle and Martha. They three devoured the leftover curry, which Dempsey was planning to save it for the next day. Dempsey isn't convinced for what Marcus told her. It doesn't matter if Giselle is working or not. She should still cover some of the expenses. Hey, next time cook something healthier for my niece. Dempsey gets shocked because Marcus never even cared about what Luna eats. For the next few days, Marcus was giving all his attention to Giselle and Martha. Giselle, I got that cake you wanted to eat. Yay! Thank you, brother! Martha, I bought you this toy from your favorite anime. Thank you, uncle! Marcus only bought the cake only for Giselle and Martha. The toy only for Martha. Martha and Luna are almost the same age. Dempsey wonders why Marcus can't think about Luna. She must want some cakes and toys as well. Dempsey tells herself that it'll just be a few more days to endure. If Giselle gets to make up with her husband, she and Martha will leave. Dempsey hopes that after they are gone, everything will be fine, like before. One day, Luna says to Dempsey, Mom, do you think Dad likes Martha than me? Oh, what, what do you think so? Because he only plays with her. He doesn't even look at me when I try to talk to him. Luna tears up. Dempsey hugs Luna tightly. 
Don't worry, everything will be fine. Dad is Luna's dad, not mother's. Dempsey manages to reassure Luna, but she knows deep down that she has to confront Marcus. Few days later, Dempsey asks Marcus to change up things. Have you noticed that Luna is feeling lonely? It's okay to be nice to Martha. Please give her some attention. Oh, okay. What is that attitude? Did you forget that our daughter is Luna? It's not Martha. Oh, okay, okay. I just have to play with Luna too, right? Despite what he said, Marcus keeps playing with Martha only. Giselle only cares about Martha as well. Luna watches them having fun from a distance. Dempsey tried to play with Luna as much as possible, yet she still looks sad. After a month since Giselle and Martha moved in, Dempsey's life was falling apart. They're getting financially tight. Also, Giselle and Martha would keep making a mess so the place would never be clean. Dempsey was never able to feel peace. Marcus kept sticking with Giselle and Martha, ignoring Dempsey and Luna. Dempsey finally decides to speak up even knowing that it will upset Marcus. Can't do this anymore. You need to start thinking about our future. Why are you suddenly bringing this up? I already brought this up to you so many times. Please understand that we aren't doing great financially. You really have to come up with a plan about Giselle and Martha. We can't afford to support them forever. You have to understand that Giselle is still fighting with her husband. They should talk together to sort it out. It's been a month already. Me and Luna can't live like this anymore. I'm asking you to consider more about us. Our family. Please don't forget about me and Luna. Luna loves you, of course. Imagine if your actual dad is giving all his attention to another kid. How would you feel? Dempsey tries to explain to Marcus about Luna's feelings and expects him in a good way. However, Marcus says something unbelievable. She's is my sister, that means she's your family. How could you can say things like that? Stop being a bitch! Dempsey gets confused by Marcus's word. What did he just call her? Her brain couldn't process it. Dempsey actually doesn't hate Giselle and Martha. It's just that she can't do this forever. All she wants is to talk to Marcus, sort things out. I always felt that you are such a cold-hearted bitch. Giselle is in trouble, and Martha has been missing her dad. I have to give them some love, you know? Luna has you. You are the one who has to do something about this, not me. What? Wait. We are not only letting them stay at ours, but even covering their expenses. On top of that, why me and Luna have to live like this? Their expenses are covered by not only from your salary, but from mine too. Nothing wrong about that. Giselle is my sister, which means she's also a family to you. You are supposed to be nice, yet you keep saying mean things and being difficult. Shame on you. Marcus raises his voice and blames Dempsey. Marcus drops a bomb. Jesus wants to live here forever. We will keep them here and cover all the expenses. Dempsey was believing that they could still talk and be back like how they were. Now, she lost her hope, realizing that it was a stupid dream. Dempsey missed Marcus in his eyes. Let's divorce. What did you say? Marcus could not process what Dempsey just said. After a couple of silent moments, Marcus looks towards Dempsey. Divorce? Did you just say we are going to divorce? Are you kidding? I'm not joking. I'm serious. Since you aren't considering about me and Luna's feelings at all, why should I consider yours? From now on, I'm going to choose what's best for Luna. Marcus was caught off guard, yet he keeps bluffing. Well, do you think you can raise Luna by yourself? That's impossible. Yes, I bet it will not be easy to do so. However, it's way better than living like this. Okay, if you want to divorce so much, then hand me the paper. I don't mind signing at all. Just remember that it'll be too late to take it back if you change your mind later. Marcus is confident that Dempsey will not dare to have him actually sign. However, Dempsey already had the paper ready. She passes it to Marcus with a pen. He stares on the paper, completely frozen. What's wrong with you? You said you will sign it. Um, um, oh, okay. Marcus rattles. Dempsey forces him to grab the pen. Hey, sign it. It... It, it was just a joke. What? You were joking. After telling me 
that it will be too late if I change my mind later. That's so lame that you are the one changing your mind. Shut up! Okay, I will sign it! Marcus furiously signs the paper and shoves back to Dempsey. Here you go! Are you satisfied? Get out from here! Dempsey keeps her calm and starts to speak. You are the one who is living. What? Did you forget that we rented this place under my name? Oh, after you brought your beloved sister. The money you were putting wasn't enough to cover our expenses. Hence, I was the one paying for the whole rent. I can't believe that you didn't think about this. So stupid. Is your brain okay? What's going on? Jesus runs towards Marcus and grabs him. Brother, what's going on? Didn't you tell me that we can stay here forever? Did you lie to me? Giselle, that's not... I didn't lie to you. I thought that you would let us stay here forever. That's why I asked your help. Why is this happening? I never thought of things turning like this. You're so useless. How can't you even convince your own wife? While Giselle and Marcus are having an ugly fight, Dempsey goes grabs their belongings and threw it out the door. Giselle gets closer to Dempsey. Hey, hey, what are you doing to our belongings? Since Dempsey decided to divorce with Marcus, she has no reason to nice to Giselle. I just threw away some stranger's belongings from my place. By the way, did you realize that you were trespassing? Get out from here immediately, she says in a low voice. Giselle shakes her shoulders and backs off. Dempsey, that's too extreme. You don't have to throw their belongings. You too. Please leave here as soon as possible. I have nothing to do with you guys. How dare you speak like that to your husband? You aren't my husband anymore. You are my ex-husband. I never thought that you could be this mean. You obviously like your sister and your niece more than your actual daughter. Why don't you spend time with them rather than staying here? Where should we go? You know that we have nowhere to go. Are you still telling us to leave? I don't care. Go wherever. Just don't stay here. Otherwise, I will call the police. Dempsey watches the three of them leave her place awkwardly, then closes the door. Dempsey thinks, I will probably never see them again. Dempsey spots Luna speaking out from the corner. Mom, where is that? Sorry, Luna. Is it okay to be just two of us? Luna hesitates for a moment, but shows a wide smile. I'm happy with you, Mom. If Mom is with me, then I don't need anyone else. Luna runs towards Dempsey. Dempsey hugs her tightly. Dempsey thinks that she doesn't need a husband. She can be happy just with her daughter. A few days later, Dempsey sends Marcus' belongings to his parents' house and explains everything via phone. She figures out that those three went back to their parents' place, but they have been kicked out and disowned. They eventually use Marcus' money to rent a small apartment room and live in three together. Dempsey was also informed that Giselle's wasteful habits were the cause of her and her husband's fights. Now Giselle's husband is asking her to pay back for what she spent. Meanwhile, Marcus is sending Dempsey some creepy messages on a daily basis. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you and Luna the most. I want us to be back as a family. Of course, Dempsey will not make a reply. She will delete it immediately. Luna isn't willing to meet Marcus. Hence, Dempsey isn't letting him to meet her. Dempsey is planning to move soon to avoid Marcus' visit. Dempsey is determined to give enough love to Luna so she can understand that she will still be happy without having a father.